Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. Today's video is going to be what I would do if I were starting to write and self-publish a book for the first time. What I would do today. This is not a how-to video because I've done other videos where I give you tips on how to write a book and how to hit different beats or how to self-publish. This is basically what I would do if I were starting new. So if that sounds good to you, then stick around. So I started writing in 2009. I published my first book in 2012, but then in 2017 is when I really started taking my career to the next level. I decided to hone in on what it really means to be a writer and a creative entrepreneur. And that's when I really started honing in on this business of writing and self publishing. So in 2017, I published my romance novel, Falling For You. In 2019, I published a journal for writers. Here it is, my book companion journal. And in 2020, I published another novel, Between Us, and the manifesting journal. In 2021, I published book two to that romance novel, Choose Us and the nonfiction journal for writers. And this year in 2022, I published my latest book, Enough, Stop the Negative Chatter and Know Your Worth. So as you can see, I've published about one to two books a year since 2017. So I think I've learned a little bit about the process of writing and publishing and that's why I wanted to share this video with you guys. So this is what I would do today if I was writing and self-publishing for the first time. The first thing we're gonna jump into is writing. As far as writing, I would probably, the very first thing I would do is I would probably pick a genre instead of the multi-genre that I write in. I write fiction and non-fiction, but the reason I say I would probably pick one is because it's really hard to establish your authority as an author or as a brand when your audiences are vastly different. So yes, of course, there might be times when somebody who reads romance novels also reads nonfictions and they can, you know, intertwine and that's fine, but it's a lot harder when I'm trying to market a nonfiction book to a certain group of readers and then I'm trying to market my romance novels to another group of readers. So my hope is that somehow I find the two that like self-help and like romance and I can just funnel them through the same um, social media accounts. Otherwise, it's really hard for me to, you know, just really talk about self-help stuff to people who are only interested in maybe just me as an author or maybe me as a romance author in the same way in the romance. If I'm targeting just my romance readers, then anyone who's interested in motivation and inspiration and, and self-help stuff might feel that they don't connect with me. So I probably would pick one genre, even though I love both of them. I probably would pick one or maybe what I would do is separate them completely. And I'm talking about two different names. I would have a name for my novels and a name for my nonfiction. And if the readers end up, you know, realizing that I'm the same person, that's great. But maybe I could just separate them. That's one thing I would definitely do if I was starting over today. The next thing I would do is I would outline. I did not outline with either of these books and it was very hard. This was actually harder than this one because this one, I really had, this one's not available anymore because it was my very first novel and I kind of didn't know how to do it and although I love the story, I just, I would, I would probably put it up for sale again and if I could just go back to it and just fix it the way I know it can't be fixed and just written the way I write now. So this was not available for sale, this one definitely is and I didn't outline either of these and it was hard. It was hard to understand where my story was going. It was hard. I got lost in the middle. So I, I think I, it eventually, obviously I finished it. I'm happy with them. But for my sake as a writer, I would definitely, definitely outline if I was starting from the start again. Now we're going to hop into 
publishing. What I would do if I were starting my publishing career from the start, and the very first thing I would do is I would go straight to self-publishing. There are a million reasons why self-publishing just works better for me, and I think I've done videos on that topic before. If I have, I will link it below so you guys can check it out. But the very first reason why I would self-publish is because I understand my direction. I understand my final goal, which is getting readers to read my book. So I don't need an agent or a publishing company to do that for me. Yes, they could do it at the masses, but the way the publishing companies are right now, as an author, we do have to do a lot of the work. And yes, they might help you with marketing, but that's all money that they have to put out. They still expect you to do it. Your cut is not as much as it is when you self-publish. So in the end, you might end up doing the same amount of work with less money. So if you're thinking about, oh, I'm going to get a lot more money for, you know, if I go with an agent or a traditional publishing company, that's not the case. Plus, you, in order to make a lot of money, in the publishing, the traditional publishing side, you probably cannot be middle market. You probably have to be somebody like in in the nonfiction world, like Mel Robbins, Gabby Bernstein, and in the fiction world, you have to be like Sarah Moss, or you have to be JK Rowling. You have to be really up there to start making real money. When you are in the middle market, it might not be worth it other than you know getting the recognition that a publishing company you're published by a traditional publishing company so for me i would probably avoid the query letters the stress of querying the stress of rejections and i would 100 percent skip all that and go straight to self-publishing the next thing i would definitely do i wouldn't use my name and okay so I thought I was being clever because my real name is Maribel and I thought I'd just shorten it because that's what everyone calls me anyway, which is Mari. And I thought that would be enough of a difference. Well, it's not. And I just, I think from comfort reasons, I just, the way the internet is out and not that they couldn't find me if they wanted to, for my own comfort, I just wish I hadn't used my real name. So the next thing I would do from the start I would hire professionals to do most of the work for me. And what I mean by that is not obviously not writing the novel, but editing the novel. So I didn't have this novel professionally edited. And what happened is because it wasn't professionally edited, I didn't feel confident in it and I didn't promote it that much and it's currently unavailable as I mentioned earlier. So I think if I had believed more in the novel because I had a professional behind it, you know, giving me the pointers that I need to fix it and just proofread it for me and just do the job that the editors do. This novel might still be available and I would believe in it a little more. So like I said, I love the book. Many people have told me they love the book, those who have read it. And I just, I know that one day, I think I'll go back to it and probably fix it, edit it, and put it back out there. So with that said, that is something I highly recommend is to get things done professionally that you cannot do. If you are a writer and an editor, well, you are lucky if you are because I wish I was, then great. You can edit your own work, though I don't recommend it. I still think you should get someone else to edit your work, but definitely edit. I also... Uh, format my own novels and I think I do a pretty good job at it even back then when I hardly knew how to do it I did it really really well so I'm not afraid of formatting my novels so that's something that I don't pay for but if you're not comfortable doing that then go ahead and pay for it anything that's going to prevent you from promoting your book anything that's going to stop you from believing in your book then you need to pay for it. If the if you are a designer and you can design your cover top notch, do it. But if you are just, you know, 
playing around with Canva, then maybe you should hire someone to do your cover. If you don't know much about formatting, maybe hire someone to do your formatting and definitely have someone editing your novel. And now we're jumping into the business side of what I would do if I were starting today. So on the business side, the very first thing I would do is I would probably take a course on marketing for authors. It is very hard. If you've been here for any amount of time, you know that that's something that I kind of struggle with. I can write, I can self-publish, I can do the things, you know, I mean, I've created, just one second, I created affirmation cards. I've not only created my books, I've also created journals, book companion journals. I've done the things. But as far as getting myself out there and I read books I've read books on marketing I've taken even recently I've taken um a conference online for authors I think it's Incon, and that's by Alexander Torre I did a whole video on that I'll link it below for you guys and I've watched videos but I still I can't get myself to that level of marketing for authors that takes me to the next level, takes my career to the next level, takes my books to the next level. So I still feel that it's it's hard for me to grasp that. So maybe a course right from the start. I mean, I just started doing that now. So imagine how much more I would learn if I would have done it back in 2017, not to mention if I'd done it in 2012. But let's go just as far back as 2017. If I had started learning about marketing for authors at that time, I might be so much more ahead than I am now. So if you are like me and you struggle with marketing and just talking about your books and getting yourself out there, then I highly suggest that you look on the internet, even YouTube, because YouTube is a lot of really helpful when it comes to finding other authors that are really good at doing what they do, which is marketing themselves. So if you don't have the funds to go and get a course, then maybe just invest every day an hour on finding marketers online that can teach you how to market yourself and your books the best you can so that you can have the best outcome as possible. The next thing I would do is I would start saving for expenses. So being an author, being a self-published author is expensive. You could potentially write a book, upload it to KDP and spend zero dollars. You can just write it, not have it edited. You could create your own cover. You could do the whole formatting and you can upload it to KDP for free and never spend a dime. Don't recommend that unless you are top notch at all three things, writing, editing, and cover design and well, four things and formatting. So if you're not like the best of the best or the best that you can accomplish at this time, then I highly recommend that you do pay for those things. Not only do you have to pay for an editor, do you have to pay for cover designs? If you are planning on not using the ISBN numbers from the carriers that they offer you, you might want to buy your own. That's an expense. If you want to not use your name and have that liability under yourself and you want to incorporate, that's another expense. If you want to upload with Ingram Spark, that's an expense. If you want to advertise, that's an expense. And if you want to attend book conferences or writing conferences, that's also an expense. So instead of like waiting till I publish my book or until I start almost getting close to finishing my book to start thinking of all the expenses, I would probably start saving from the start, like at the beginning of the year, decide, okay, next year I am going to publish two books and this is what I need. So basically create a budget for yourself if that is something that you are wanting to do. And then that way you can decide, well, my budget only allows me to fully invest in one book. So instead of publishing two books, you write one book and then you can write two books, but only publish one a year. So creating a budget really does help you identify how far you can go in the year with your publishing career. The next thing I would do is I would jump on a social media site as soon as possible and start building your brand 
immediately, like fast. So when I first started writing, I only had Facebook. I didn't have Facebook uh, pages. I just had my regular Facebook, you know, where I shared with my friends. And the problem is sometimes your friends and family dismiss you as a professional and they kind of like not really give you the support that you need even if one or two do it it's not the same as reaching out to the masses reaching out to people that you don't know that perhaps are interested in the same things that you are doing because it's not sometimes it's not even that they don't want to support you but so I write romance novels how many of my friends actually read or read novels like the ones I'm writing so it's not necessarily that they don't want to support me it's that maybe they're just not interested in what I'm doing so I would definitely stop expecting to be supported by my friends and family and I would definitely hop on a social media site that um, is comfortable for you that you feel you can be really really active on like for me that's Instagram I know that uh, I probably should have hopped on the TikTok band a long time ago. I'm mostly scrolling on TikTok more than I post. I have a few posts up there, but I, I'm not drawn to share my content there as much as I am here on YouTube and on Instagram. On Instagram, I am there daily sharing stories and reels and posts. So if you are not following me on Instagram yet and you wanna stay up to date with me daily, make sure you hang out with me over there. I'll leave the link in the description box below. If you are still here, I would love to hear from you. Leave me a comment below letting me know how many books you have published or how many books you plan on publishing this year and remember to give this video a thumbs up. The last thing I would do if I were starting to write and self-publish today is I'd connect with other writers immediately. You guys, I am an introvert. I don't like to leave my house. This is my comfort zone. I love being home. Being around other people makes me really, really nervous, especially people that I don't know. So I've seen a lot of my fellow writers who we kind of started around the same time, like skyrocket, not only on Instagram, but on YouTube. And I've observed the situation and I believe it's because these particular YouTubers and writers have really uh, taken the time to connect with other writers. And I'm not just talking about online doing collaborations because I've done collaborations with other writers, but not to the degree that these others have done it. They've done lives with each other. They've attended conferences with each other. They've attended, they've done their own thing where they all gather up and get together. Like that would really make me so nervous to do something like that and be in a group with people that I just don't know. But I think it's necessary. If you're just starting out or you're in the middle of a rebrand, I really encourage you to try to meet in person with other writers or do lives with other writers or leave comments on their YouTube videos or their Instagram. I am just such a, oh guys, I, I am a shy person and it may not come across on the camera because a lot of people who claim to be shy, you know, would never think of me as shy because I'm doing this, but I am. And, and this is not a plug, I promise. It may sound like a plug, but if you read my book, you'll learn just how shy I am. I take you through so many stories of how I just blacked out because I just couldn't deal. So I'm telling you, I am so shy, but it is a necessary step in your career to mingle with readers and writers. It is so important. You cannot do this on your own. You cannot grow on YouTube on your own. You cannot sell books on your own. You have to mingle with other people. All right, you guys, that is it for this week's video. Stay tuned because I have a lot more videos coming up. As you can see, I'm in a new space. For those of you who missed it, I moved again. I am finally back home. I moved out of North Carolina back to Florida. I am in Central Florida at the moment and I am loving life. I am so happy I am here and I am ready to show up for you guys and just record more videos. I'm debating again, doing two videos per week, but I'm going to take it slow just for a minute. I'm still going to th I think I'm still going to do one a video one a week 
but stay tuned because I might do too. Who knows? But anyways, that is it for today. I will see you again in a brand new video next time. Until then, stay safe.